Come on in. Welcome to Idled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're talking about Survivor's most lopsided starting tribes. Last year, I covered the most lopsided tribe swaps in Survivor history, so I think it's fair we only give completely physically mismatched starting tribes their due. Generally divided preseason by the producers, starting tribes in Survivor tend to be split up pretty fairly, I'd say, especially when they're not only balancing for physical strength, but also trying to separate similar archetypes, fit people into their tribal theme, maximize interpersonal drama, and so on. Balance is hard, and you never know who's going to over or underperform in challenges. So I'm just going to trust my eyeballs and go off an on-paper analysis here and not an in-practice one. On day one, looking the tribes up and down, does one tribe just look literally head and shoulders above the other? I won't be including seasons where the castaways divided the tribes themselves, like Thailand, Palau, Fiji, and Gabon, because those are always super imbalanced. The players clearly do not know how to divide themselves, and also, then I'd be stuck talking about Survivor Thailand, Fiji, and Gabon. So I'll be going with seasons where production divided the tribes pre-game. All that said, let's dig in to five Survivor seasons where the starting tribes were comically lopsided. What do you think, Maddie? You like this tribe? Yeah. <laughs> like he has a choice. I got three moms. At number five are the heroes and villains of Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. I can forgive this one since their hand was forced by the theme, but wow. On paper, the heroes outclass the villains in every single way. Casting for this theme with an eye for balance would be nigh impossible. I mean, what are you gonna do? Put obvious heroes like Candace on the villains tribe? You can't do that. She's so heroic. Pound for pound, the heroes are one of the most stacked tribes in Survivor history. Their men are huge and their women are strong. Colby, Rupert, James, Stephanie. This tribe was designed in a lab to please the commenters on Survivor's Facebook page. Go on, Survivor. Give them some fan service. The villains tribe, by comparison, looks downright wimpy. I guess they have Rob, Tyson, Danielle. But Sandra and Courtney on the same tribe, the number one and number two benchwarmers in Survivor history, is a bold choice. Anyone looking at these two tribes preseason would just assume the villains would get spanked. Of course, in practice, things were much different. Colby, at one point the most dominant challenge beast in Survivor history, is now an over-the-hill cowboy getting manhandled by Coach. Rupert and Stephanie suffer injuries at the first challenge, severely stifling the hero's challenge ability moving forward. And most importantly, the oversized egos of the heroes caused clashes that affected their challenge performance greatly. Being designated a hero really went to Rupert's brain. Who would have thunk? The villains also had an ace in the hole in Rob. Always an all-around great challenge competitor, he was at his absolute peak here, leading the villains to win after win after win in the first part of the game. It's no surprise that one of the only challenges the heroes won in the early stage is the individual, strength-based sumo challenge. Any challenges requiring teamwork and cohesion, the villains won handily thanks to his leadership. If anything, Heroes vs. Villains is the textbook example of why tribal cohesion is one of the biggest factors in pre-merge success. Obviously, a gifted challenge god like Ozzy or Joe can carry a weak team, but the villains show that a largely unified and happy tribe can make up for most weaknesses. It's no wonder that the second the villains fractured and voted out Tyson and Rob, the heroes got momentum. Silly villains, you should have taken a page out of the Ometepe tribe's playbook and just never voted Rob out. I mean, once they fell in line, Ometepe completely dominated, leading me to conclude that, scientifically speaking, Ometepe is a better tribe than the villains. Is this thing on? At number four are the tribes in Survivor Edge of Extinction. Hama and Manu. One really wonders what they were thinking when they put Joe, Gavin, Eric, and Aurora on a tribe together, and it's not the tribe that also has Reem, David, and Keith on it. One wonders. 
forget David versus Goliath. This was the real David versus Goliath matchup of Survivor's late 30s. Just looking at these tribes side by side, it's clear that something's wrong. It almost seems like Manu was destined to fail. And some think it was. I'm not sure I buy it, but I've heard it suggested that the tribes were divided in a way to maximize protecting the returnees. It's a fun conspiracy like Bigfoot existing or the moon being real, so let's get into it. These theories aren't exactly new. All the way back in Survivor Guatemala, people were suggesting that Yasha was intentionally physically weaker to make Stephanie look better by comparison and to give the tribe some obvious cannon fodder to protect her from being one of the first to go. Here's the theory for Edge of Extinction. EOE was defined by a strong anti-returnee sentiment, particularly on Kama. Surely this was discovered in casting. Literally every newbie on Kama except Aurora wanted Aubrey and Joe out first. If anything, their belief that returnees had had their shot and should be voted out early bonded the Kama tribe together. But as we saw on Cambodia, Joe can almost single-handedly carry a tribe. Then you load up the other tribe with physically weaker players so that Kelly and David look valuable in comparison. And in case things go south, there's a Keith or Reem to take out as an easy tribe consensus. Most of the people willing to work with returnees were also on Manu. Lauren literally says in her bio that Kelly Wentworth is the former Survivor player she's most like, then is on a tribe with Kelly. Hmm. My two favorite players are Kelly Wentworth and my total Survivor crush is Joe. However, I'd say it's just as likely that they just put way too much stock in Lauren, Chris, and Wardog's ability to carry this tribe. And then Manu made increasingly baffling decisions like voting out their strongest guy third and repeatedly trusting War Dog to close. I mean... Considering how strong the anti-returnee sentiment on this season was, I'd say the Edge firmly killed the tribe captain format forever. None of the returnees made it past top 9, and they even unceremoniously grouped David and Wentworth's boots into a single episode. Regardless, it was clear from the start that Manu was wildly outmatched and thus a sinking ship. And wise players exited early. Wow, now that is some 8D chess. At number 3 are the age-divided tribes of Survivor Nicaragua, Espada, and La Flor. Survivor divided tribes by age and gender back in Survivor Exile Island, but that was an obvious marketing gimmick and the tribes were dissolved after a single round, so I'm going to politely exclude the original Kasaya tribe from inclusion here. Although they are worthy of an honorable mention, original Kasaya, the quote-unquote older woman's tribe, was going to get completely destroyed if the tribes weren't split up immediately. This older woman's tribe is downright ancient. There's the 35-year-old Sari and the 32-year-old Melinda. Is this elder abuse? Is it even safe to put people this old on TV? Shouldn't they be in hospice or something? Say what you want about Survivor Nicaragua, but at least it had the guts to stick to its age-divided tribes longer than a single round. Nicaragua divided tribes by having one tribe all be over 40, and the other tribe all be 30 or under. And, uh, oh wow, where did they cast Espada? The pharmacy? The early bird special at Denny's? While the old v young tribe divisions put the old folks at an obvious physical disadvantage, Survivor to its credit took significant measures to ensure the geezers had a fighting chance. Not only were the challenges far less physical than normal, but they also had the Medallion of Power, which allows the tribe holding it to get a significant advantage in the current challenge. A pretty clear attempt in my book to help Espada out. 
I don't think the young tribe LaFleur is a particularly stacked tribe or anything, but most anyone is going to look good up against Espada. Thankfully, Espada has legendary NFL coach Jimmy Johnson, whose incredible leadership brought the Cowboys consecutive Super Bowl wins in the early 90s. Teamwork makes the dream work, guys. If we just pipe down and listen to Jimmy Johnson, ah, well, okay then. Now, when one tribe has like five fewer working knees than the other, you'd assume they'd get destroyed. And Espada did lose the majority of pre-swap challenges, but not actually because of their physical disadvantage. In another example of tribal cohesion being the most important thing to a tribe's success, this tribe was full of interpersonal conflicts that tore them apart from within, including a three-way power struggle between Marty, Jimmy Johnson, and Jimmy T, Holly's mental breakdown in Dan's justified anger at her for destroying his $1,600 shoes, and a brewing mutual hatred between Jane and Marty that would eventually boil over. Mr. Farty is gonna be his name from now on instead of Marty. Wow, tone it down, Jane. This is a family show. At number two are the starting tribes in Survivor Ghost Island, Navidi and Malolo. I mean, we all know Navidi's strong, but wow, Navidi's strong. You gotta be kidding me. Navidi is a stacked tribe by any measure, but up against Malolo, this is comically unfair. Not only is Navidi physically strong, it's also extremely well-rounded. It goes without saying that Wendell, Dom, and Seabass are all around great challenge competitors. Then you've got Kellen and Bradley for puzzles, and Chris as the beefy brute force. The rest of the tribe are no slouches either. Everyone can hold their own in the challenges. To really twist the knife in Malolo, Morgan and Sebastian both have jobs that put them in the water a lot. Morgan's a dolphin trainer and Sebastian's a beach bum or something. So they're both going to be beasts in the water. When Chris started telling me all this stuff about Florida, I was immediately attracted. On top of all that, Wendell's a furniture maker by trade and Dominic's in construction. So even camp life is gonna be lush. They were really banking on the PE teacher to hard carry Malolo, weren't they? These tribal divisions are truly mind boggling. They get more baffling every time I look at them. You could argue that Laurel and Brendan are the strongest athletes on the season, but who on earth would put Donathan and Jacob on the same tribe? And that tribe also has Libby and Jenna. They try to balance Navidi by giving them the token older person, but that's hardly the nerf they think it is because Angela, the oldest person on this cast, is only 42 and is former military. Ghost Island is a younger, fitter cast than usual for Survivor in the 30s, but almost all of the stronger people are on Navidi and all of the weaker people are on Malolo. I honestly would not be surprised if the episode two tribe swap was originally unplanned and was a quick fix to save Malolo before the planned tribe expansion in episode five. Once they realized that Malolo was on the oolong trajectory, Put on your tinfoil hat though, maybe this was all planned from the start. After all, Ghost Island is a season themed around survivor curses. The orange tribe in Survivor is notoriously cursed. Malolo did their best to keep the orange tribe curse alive by sucking at every possible turn. Perhaps the tribal divisions were an intentional manifestation of a classic survivor curse to see if Malolo themselves could reverse the orange tribe curse on Survivor's very own curse-themed season? Or maybe it was just accidentally bad tribal divisions. Definitely one of the two. At number one are the starting tribes in Survivor China, Fei Long and Zhan Hu, the most imbalanced starting tribes in Survivor history. You know, there's this American folktale about a man named Paul Bunyan who was so strong he could cut down trees in a single chop. Legends spread far and wide across the American prairie of this giant man and his Herculean logging powers. On the Fei Long tribe on Survivor China, there's a man who doesn't even need an axe. He could just push trees over. James is literally stronger than a tall tale legendary for his inhuman strength. Throw surfing instructor Aaron into the mix, the brute strength of Jean Robert, and the all-around challenge abilities of Amanda. And you've got a tribe that's not going to tribal council much. 
Any tribe with James is always going to have an edge, but come on. John Hu's strongest guy is Grizzly Adams. Now, there is a reason for the imbalanced starting tribes, at least according to some of the players and longtime fan rumors. Several former players have suggested that this was an experiment from production in tribe balancing, and while it's never been officially confirmed, I can buy it. The rumor is that instead of trying to sort the strong and weak players equally across tribes like you normally would, in China they put the four strongest and four weakest players on Fei Long, with the eight in the middle going to Zhan Hu. An interesting but ultimately failed experiment if true, considering that James and Aaron carried Fei Long through the early challenges, got the tribe the edge, then they just sat out Courtney at every turn. John Hu is getting beat so bad that at the tribe swap, where each tribe gets to steal the two strongest players from the other tribe, John Hu doesn't even think they have to trade anyone away. They think because they're getting beat so bad, they just get James and Aaron for free. If you needed any more proof that China's tribes were wildly unbalanced from the start, Fei Long trades away James and Aaron and gets Frosty and Sharia in return. It's clear that James and Aaron should have been split up from the very beginning. Zhan Hu really stood no chance up against them. Although we can't put all of Zhan Hu's failures on Fei Long being stronger here. I mean, they can't even dress themselves. Got nothing else for ya. To help me keep my views Naviti strong, like and subscribe and I'll get you more survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.